start down here. Okay, just walk, walk up into the first deck and just walk you up to the third deck. Okay. So then you get to see all the exhibits and all the way up and just give you... One an, by one going up? Yep. Okay. Would it be okay if we started on the third and went down to the first? Well, we could do, um, but it's sort of in order if you go one, two, three. Okay. So um, it's up to Bill. You want to do one, two, three, or three, two, one? And the, and the so thing is, I, there, I, I think we're going to do a sit down afterwards. Where is the sit down going to be? In the third deck. Okay. I'm actually, I'm honestly fine with anything. Okay. You, really want to do the third yeah, you guys scoped it out. Oh, you want to fix it? Go for it. Do you mind if we go to the third first? Well, we could do. It's just that we've got to come down and come all the way back up. That's all. It's just. Can we take the elevator back up to get up to the third? Because um, we were, uh, Jason and I got a chance to look through, and so we loved the, um, the top four exhibits the most. It was even an exhibit with Bill. So we thought that we could start up there. Is that all right? To so you want to go three, two, one? That's okay. Okay. Man, this lighting is so insane. But we want this hidden. Did you get that on <laughs> sound? <laughs> I'll record a lightning effect for here. While we're at it, I'm going to change batteries and get that time. Um, so let me take your uh, receiver here. Well, we need to go up in the elevator. I don't have any Here, I got So can you go two. get the elevator um, ready? Yeah, that, that's fine. We only have one elevator working right now. The big freight elevators still not. It up. Okay. Well, that was a nice cracker. <laughs> oh, I can see the light. I looked on the radar. Once this goes through, there's nothing behind it. That was especially for you, Bill. I... <laughs> no, it was me. I got I get behind on my email sometimes. <laughs> no, I'm way behind this week on my emails. All right. Uh, well, we're ready, but I'm not sure he is. They are. So we'll take the elevator to the third. And then yeah. The okay. Down. So Ben, if you want to look after getting the elevator for us. Um, so we we're really we're ready rolling. To go. So, Mr. Ham, the are these chines for stability? Yeah. Yeah. The, these. Um, it, it's built with three keels because uh, we had uh, an architect who's involved There's in marine engineering. Shell, right? No, they're, real, they're concrete piers. They go down to know, actually solid a, rock. There's a shell above this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, in other words, Mr. Ham, this, this ship is not seaworthy, is it? What do you oh, we, did, we didn't what build it. What do you say to kids? Yeah. Yeah. We didn't yeah, build it to float because there's never, never going to be another global flood. So we, we, How do you know that? that? It was designed as a ship, but built as a building. So How do I know that? Well, on the basis of the Bible. I know I believe the Bible is God's word, and I know you don't, but... On the basis of the Bible, uh, Three. after the flood, God said there'll never be another global flood again. Been lots of local floods, but not when, global. When did he? Where does this say that? Genesis chapter ten. Oh, sorry, Genesis chapter nine. God said there's a covenant between him and man, and him and the animals, and the rainbow was the sign of that covenant uh, that there would never be another flood as the one that he sent. So. Rainbows, what, what makes a rainbow? Would there be rainbows without that covenant? Oh, yeah, I, I think rainbow, it doesn't say that that's when God made the rainbow, it just says that the rainbow was to be a sign. In other words, any time you see a rainbow, it's to, it's to be a reminder. In other words, it, it, a reminder that there'll never be another global flood. So yeah, a rainbow would exist when you have uh, the, well, the right amount of light. Will we see a rainbow today? Will we say rainbow today? We might. If once the sun, once the sun uh, is seen through the clouds there, you never know, we might. Uh, you might, but when it's the middle of the day, the sun's high, and you seldom get that directed angle to create a rainbow. Once in a while. Careful, careful. Yeah. So uh, what goes on here in the Ice Age? Um, well, one of the things that we're talking about is uh, the Ice Age was generated uh, by the flood. In other words, you know, those who believe in evolution actually believe I'm in sorry, ice so ages. your claim is that there was an ice age 4,000 years ago? Uh, the ice age was back towards what, what the flood. Do you, what do yeah. you base that on? 
What do we base that on? Well, as, as you know... Here we have evidence for this. Yeah. What's the evidence for, for uh, that? Well, I, no, we don't have evidence for that. That's an interpretation. You can't find ice that has labels on it. Yes, you can. Labels? Absolutely. They say, I'm 300,000 yes. years old? Oh, well, yes, sir, you're a I've science never, educator. I've never seen one of those. Where you do you look, see one of those? You count uh, neutrons and oxygen atoms. We, you, mm -hmm. That's how it's done. Yeah, but it's as though it has a label. But, very but, it, much. Do, but it doesn't say I'm 300,000 years old. Not in English, no. No, you, you have, have to, to interpret it on the basis of certain assumptions, right? You have assumptions? Certain discoveries. No, assumptions. I mean... Let's go with discoveries. No, let's, let's go, go ahead. With, let's go, go ahead. How do you get an ice age 4,000 years ago? Let's go with assumptions because whenever you're interpreting the past, you have to have certain basic assumptions about uh, elements that were there and rates of change and all that sort of thing. So you're saying, is this your observational science and historical science? Oh, absolutely. So, what it's are not, you, so it's not my it, observational science, so, historical science. So explain this. There, in my opinion, in my view, there's no evidence for an ice age 4,000 years ago. Let me ask you a question. Did, did you want to walk through the ark, or did you just want to come up here and attack our beliefs? Well, I... Because I did whichever promise... Whichever you like, sir. I, I did promise you a walk through the oh, ark. Okay, okay. And I know you want to head to the third floor because our teaching exhibits are here. But let, let me explain here. Actually, creationists have a mechanism for an ice age. Because after the flood, you've got warm water, cool land, a lot of evaporation. You're going to have a mechanism for an ice age. What, what's your mechanism for ice ages? Because you would believe in ice ages, right? I mean, different ice ages over hundreds of thousands of years. The eccentricity of the Earth's orbit? Yeah, but I mean, you know, you're looking at that... You're looking at the Earth's orbits now, but what's your mechanisms for the different well, ice we ages? look at what the Earth was doing 300,000 years ago. But you can't look at that. Well, you can only see the Earth now. Yeah, but you can see evidence of the past. Well, so, we see evidence in the present So where, where do you draw process. the line? This is what everybody wonders about, your okay. worldview. Okay. Where do you draw the line between what you can observe directly and what you can infer? Well, I, I know that... If you come into a room and a window's open, do you presume that no one opened it because you weren't there to watch them open it? Well, the thing if is... If you see ice in a glass, do you presume it got there in the last few seconds because you weren't there to see the freezer you know, You know, it's extraordinary. I, it's an extraordinary worldview. Go yeah. ahead, lead on. Okay, so you don't want answers. Sure, go ahead. You just want to make statements without sure, answers. Go ahead. You know, come on, we can have a friendly talk about this. Go ahead. Things. You know, you, you come up here and attack mode, Bill. Come on, let's not attack each other. Go ahead. Let's just, let's just be friendly. And I know you have a different worldview to me. And, um, you know, when it, comes to, when it comes to something like ice cube in a cup, I mean, we live in the present world and we've experienced those things. We've experienced ice cubes and we, we have cups and that's something that's in, within our life's experiences and it's very easy to infer that somebody put that ice in that cup. But when it comes to talking about the past when we weren't there and things we didn't experience, that's very different. And that, that's, that's where you, 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 we need to have an understanding of the difference between interpretation and what you actually observe in the present and have had experience with. So let's talk about this again. What makes you think this was 4,000 years ago? What makes us think that that was 4,000 years ago? Well, first of all, we take the chronology in the Bible and that chronology in the Bible is that Noah's flood was about 4,300 years ago. And so that gives us a date of at the end of the flood. Then we look at the evidence that we have today of the fact that we know that there was ice in the past. We know there were glaciers in the past that advanced because we see the evidence in the present. You can actually what, see What it. evidence do we see? Oh, glacially carved valleys. We, we can, but you we, weren't there to see those glaciers. No, carbon, that's right? true. That's true. We weren't. You're well, okay with that, but you're not okay yeah, with neutrons. The, the difference with that is we actually we can actually see what glaciers do. We've actually experienced what glaciers do, and we know the evidence that glaciers leave, and evidence of moraines, and evidence of the way but they erode. What things. about sedimentation rates? What about neutrons in the water? Sedimentation about... rates. It, it all depends on circumstances. I mean, if you weren't there, I mean, something could be deposited very quickly that you look at today and think was deposited slowly. I mean, if you didn't see it happen. That's where we disagree. No, if you didn't see it happen means it didn't happen. As I just no, 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 I'm not. No, yeah. so you're, you're I don't, something that's not I'm open-minded, but I don't see any evidence for an ice age 4,000 years ago. There are pyramids okay, you, older you know, than You've got a lot of young people ago. here. How would you convince them that there were ice it's ages actually, over hundreds Mr. of Ham, thousands Mr. Ham, that's my biggest concern. I tell you my biggest, biggest concern that you're teaching generations of these young people that are just animals, 
uh, that they come about by natural processes. Aren't you teaching that humans are animals? Are we animals? Yeah. We're, We're mammals. mammals. Breathe air. Okay. Isn't that good? So all life is related, right? Of course, right? there's a few of us uh, from your seem like lizards. From your perspective, all life is related? Certainly. Even plants? We're related to plants? It's one of the fundamental discoveries in all of life okay, science. So we're related to plants? Yes. So we're related to a banana? Yes. Okay. I just wonder. What makes you think we're not related to bananas? What evidence do you have that the DNA in bananas, the DNA in E. coli, the DNA in ancient uh, cave bears, what evidence do you have that we're not related to them? Besides, just, do you, do just you so have, we're clear. Okay. Well, do, you have, you, do, you have any, do you have any evidence that, uh, well, as you know, all life is basically, life is built on DNA. And DNA is an information system, the language system. Um, so do you have any evidence that matter produces a language system, matter produces information? I mean, there, there are billions, trillions of bits of information in living systems. Can you, can you testify to how information arose by natural processes? Here we are. That's it? That's your evidence? Well, we'll start with the evidence and work backwards. What I think you're asking is the why. Actually, you're not starting with evidence. You don't believe in God, right? Uh, that aside, here's what, here's what okay, we're disagreeing. Okay, well, let me ask you this. No, do you, do you, you believe do you believe life came about by natural processes? Yes. Okay, so you've got that belief. So yes. you don't start with evidence, you start with a belief. No, I claim I started with evidence to reach that belief. Oh, no, but... but you, you, you know, let's, look, let's look at okay. some more of the exhibit. You start, you start with a belief in naturalism. Well, you, and you start with the belief in what? Oh, yeah. I, you know, see, what's your belief? See, what is see, your belief? Start? See, I admit my belief. My belief is that God's word is true so, and that the history in God's word is true. And see, what we're talking about here, and this is the whole point that we're helping people understand. We all live in the present. We all have the same present evidence. But depending on your assumptions and how you approach your worldview depends on how you interpret evidence in relation to the past. Because you believe everything happened by natural process, you don't believe the history in the Bible, right? Well, in Genesis. Well, not literally. No, I do. Well, and, well, and, see, and see, that's, that's a big difference. So all I want you to do is admit that you have certain beliefs you start with. My beliefs are based on evidence. I think no, your belief, how, can you, how can you prove why life guy rose by natural processes? How do you prove that? We haven't proven that. Well, then that's a belief. Yes, but the explanation so, so, so that you, you provide is completely unreasonable to me. Oh, and unacceptable, and, and we un reject un it. In unreasonable, time. unreasonable by whom? Well, as soon as you go back in time. You can't go back in time. We live in the present. In your worldview. As soon as you produce a miracle, then you're not doing science. Well, I'm, not, on the outside. I'm not producing a miracle. There's no what, such thing. What do, you, what do you mean by science? So this is, this is the most troubling thing you do, Mr. Hamm. Climate change is the most serious problem facing humankind. And so by, uh, in, by trying to convince young people that climate change is not real is very serious because they're going to have to grow up and deal with it. Actually, we're saying climate change is real. The Middle Ice Age was a local phenomenon. Bill, we're saying climate change is real. So is it serious? Climate change? Yes. What you have to do then is say, what, what, why has climate, why have they changed? Climates change all the time. Let me rephrase it for you. Human caused climate change is very serious. Well, there's a lot of this debate is, about that. The there's, a, thing there's, a, there's a lot of scientists who would disagree with that. In fact, we very, have PhD scientists on our staff that would disagree with that. We have other PhD scientists. Your scientists and your staff, as respectful as I can be, are incompetent. You mean, oh, you mean Dr. Nathaniel Jensen, who has a they're, PhD they're from Harvard University? He's incompetent? Dr. From George. what I've seen on television, he is. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, it's here? Oh, here we are. Uh, tell me, Dr. Georgia Purdom, who has a PhD in molecular genetics from Ohio State, she's incompetent? Certainly seems to be. Well, this is about, in the debate, um, you talked about it takes a long time for ice to be laid down, and this is an example where it doesn't take that long at all. No, no, you're confusing ice with snow. Antarctica? Oh, oh yeah, I see. Ice. We're yeah, using what we do. Ice with snow. We're using what we do in the so what everybody, happens in the present. Everybody here 
if you visit this place in Greenland, where uh, 80 meters of to, to 260 feet of snow accumulated, uh, you will find the number of layers from 1942 to today. You will find the same numbers of the same number of layers. Okay, that's, it won't be up to me. I didn't put the layers there. The process, which I think you don't fully accept, is as the layers in, uh, get thicker and thicker, they crush down through a remarkable process called regulation. And you've done this yourselves when you make a snowball. You break the tines of the snowflakes, they release a little bit of heat, melt the water, and it gets harder and harder. And if you do it hard enough, long enough, the ice actually becomes clear. This is glacial ice. It absorbs red light and it looks blue. It's beautiful. So this is completely consistent with mainstream science. That the snow falls a lot here in this part of Greenland is not the same thing as counting the age of the Earth or the uh, records of ice ages, the records of when unleaded gas was introduced by looking at the layers of snow. Mr. Ham, with respect, you completely misunderstand the point that you're trying to make. No, Bill, I think you misunderstand the point. The point is we actually know how long those layers took to be laid down. When you go and look at the layers of ice when you bring up ice cores, you didn't see them being laid down. You weren't there at the beginning and you make assumptions about the So layers. you believe that there was a supernatural process that created the many layers that we observed. No, 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 but is that right? You no, believe that there was a supernatural process that created 670,000 layers? Absolutely not. How did no, it happen? They were laid down catastrophically. They were laid down quickly. They didn't so take. There were, they did, in other words, when you make uh, interpretations about each layer and how long it took to be laid down, that's your interpretation. And what we're saying is, you can have multiple layers very, very quickly. So and we've seen sounds that in like the present. sounds seen like you're in, no. It sounds like you're cherry picking data. No, no one is cherry picking. That's just a good example. It's a so great example. Your claim is that there were 670,000 layers of snow laid down in, for example, Antarctica or Greenland. Or hey, look, you can get multiple. You can get multiple layers in a day. How, how many can you, you get? Can, in a you day? can get multiple layers in a day, correct? I, I mean, no. you, see, you, see, you see, you see. No, no, yes, no, not like, no, no, sir. Yeah. No. You can I challenge you. On you, you can observe that. Let, let me ask a question. All these young people here, you say if they're taught creation, it'll undermine technology, destroy technology, it'll destroy their science. Is that correct? When you say destroy, you mean make Facebook not work? What do you mean? Well, I, that, well I'm asking you what you mean when you when you were at the bait and you said when you teach young people, children, you're, you're going to have a major. Pro uh, sorry, when you te teach young people, teach children creation, you're going to have a major problem in regard to technology and in the advances future, of technology. Who wants to be an astronaut? Anybody? And we find right on. Do you know what? Do you know we got a spacecraft in orbit around Jupiter on July 4th? How could it be? So we. I was at Cape Canaveral, you guys, on August 5th, 2011. Hey, let's move away from the sound. On August 5th, 2011, I was at Cape Canaveral. We launched a rocket that went out beyond the orbit of Mars, fell back toward the sun, went around the Earth, where it took an infinitesimal amount of energy from the Earth's orbit, then went out to Jupiter and approached Jupiter from the north. That's great observational On Monday, science. Uh, that spacecraft went in orbit around Jupiter. That's rocket science, everybody. Yeah, and you, you and uh, scientists, fantastic. scientists, engineers in the present use their five senses to be able to develop that technology. What's that got to do with origins? The same process enables us to count layers of snow. No, no, it doesn't, Antarctica. because you're experimenting with the rockets in the present, the fuel the structure of the rocket, the engineering. When it comes to looking at the layers that are already there, you weren't there to see them being laid down. That's the point. Yeah, so how, how do you feel about forensics, Mr. Ham? How do you feel about the process of that detectives use to determine what happened at a crime scene? Oh yeah. If you weren't there and you didn't see how a guy got right. killed. And they have to interpret the evidence and sometimes they get it wrong, actually. And, and those things are much closer in the present than when you're talking about way in the past because it might have been a murder that happened yesterday. And so yeah, you can go in and look at the evidence. So but, you're but saying... But scientists have been known. Forensic so, scientists have put people in jail who've been innocent, correct? I suppose. Yeah. Because they've made the wrong interpretation. 
But they've I didn't also have all arrested the a lot of people based on very good but, science. But, yeah, based on so, science in the so, present. So, in other words, you can test for blood and say, ah, this is blood. So this is you where we disagree. Blood. Everybody, this is where we disagree. This is where Mr. Ham and I disagree. On the nature of evidence. Oh no, the evidence is all the same. It's not so the nature when of we find people on the outside, it's the nature find of the layers of bill. snow that are this thick because they're crushed down by 670,000 years of snow. We interpret it as real. The snow actually fell 670,000 years ago. The number no, no, of no, neutrons. No. Where's the label saying it's 670,000? The neutrons. I don't want you leading these young people astray. Okay, Where, where's so the label saying it was 670,000 years? And where, in the layers where, themselves. How would they see 670,000 years? You would count the layers. You would go to the ice core lab okay. in Golden, Colorado. We've been there. And, and, and as you look at a block of ice that's been drilled out of the ice yeah, in Greenland. And you count the layers. And what do you, you do with each layer? layer? How, how do you get the 670? That's yeah. how many thousands of layers there are in certain of the cores. But what, do you, what are you assuming about the layers? Was there one a year or what yes, are you assuming? Yes, sure. But how do you but, how do we know that by careful that, that's, measurement? That's the very point of the example no, that no, we have here. By careful is measurement. That, no, you can have... Furthermore, many, you can do this. You know this. what? Some of these people are from uh, states where they get massive snow and ice storms, and I've actually seen the layers in the snow. Have you We're seen the layers in the snow? We're not talking about the same thing. Yes, yeah, have, you seen them, have you seen them crushed down to where they're clear? Um, when it rains on top of the snow, they do. Yeah, but in Antarctica... And, and multiple rains. layers. And multiple layers. Oh. So you guys, I want you to evaluate my claim that when there's 670,000 layers in a core of ice, there are 670,000 years associated with that. Well, well, I know, Compare you got, that. You've got to tell them where you get the years from. Where do you get the oh, years from? Oh, no, I say, they all evaluate it for themselves. You don't have to take my word for it. Okay, do you, not see, taking the word have you seen layers for multiple layers? I would, I would like to know your opinion, though. Like, why, what, what are the years? Like, what do you think they are? Is it every layer is one So year? The, when you guys see these particular pieces of ice I'm talking about, mm -hmm. and there's a building in Golden, Colorado, where we keep them, it's minus 36 Celsius. Everybody who works there puts on a big hood, big parka to go inside and work. You can see where the snow is crushed down. The tines of snowflakes break, release a tiny bit of heat, which makes it melt ever so slightly. And they turn this distinctive clear color. You can look at when unleaded gas was uh, in use, and when leaded gas was in use, you can see the chemicals in the snow. You can infer the temperature of the sea surface by the number of neutrons in the water. You, t you evaluate my way of looking at it and compare it with his. Well, my see, way of looking well, at it is from the what, outside. Here's what I want to do, to, to do for the young people. I actually want to teach them how to think correctly. And that is you have these layers in the present and you weren't there to see them being laid down. You don't know how many storms there were. You don't know how many But how would you figure were... out how many storms there were? Ah, well, that's the point. That's it. Well, there's a way to do exactly, it. That's exactly what no, it's His way, not. which I understand comes from a scripture, right? No, 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 no. But don't no. you think that there have been such, like, fluctuating climates and stuff that it's hard to know? But we exactly infer that also. We figure that out also. That's so, yeah, our business. Everyone, is everyone's guess then? Kind of everyone has a separate guess? I wouldn't use the word guess. Everybody understand how, how that about, on the outside, 97% at least of the world scientists are very concerned about climate change on the outside. No, no, you just caused by humans. Hey, hey Bill, you just swapped subjects. Let's well, get no, back to the, of a piece. No, no we, get, we discovered ancient climates and what it used to be like by looking at these same cores of ice, these same pieces of ice. But are, are you really discovering ancient climates or are you just discovering what's there in the present and you're interpreting as ancient climates, it could have been different conditions in the one year. Very, very skeptical. There's absolutely but, no way, but, in my view, that you could have that many conditions in one year but, and nobody but, noticed. But, Mr. Ham, there are trees older than you believe the earth is. How do you know that? Mr. Ham, because uh, we count tree rings. But Mr. Ham, there wait, are wait, pyramids, wait, there are human-built structures older than no, the let's, stuff you let's are get back, showing you. Let's get back to the tree rings. We want these people to understand. So what we all but, wonder about you. No, let's get back to the tree rings. Let's, let's talk about okay, tree Okay, let's get back to tree rings. So, when you're counting those rings, um, you assume one growth period a year? Most of the time. How do you know that? 
We've looked at because, a lot of trees. Yeah, and we've actually seen trees that can Millions have multiple. Of trees. We've actually seen trees that can have multiple growth rings here. Depend, have you seen it trees it that depends have on thousands of trees? It, oh yes, absolutely. And and you when you put no, them. No, I mean really. And, and we, <laughs> of course, we've actually got. Uh, um, so when you get out there, trees when you get out in rings. the world, compare his claim to my claim. My claim is that you can count years from tree rings. You can infer okay, uh, let me ask how you many plants okay, were there. Okay, in front of all these young the people, column. let me ask you this. Do you know, okay, let's move on. No, no, no. Do you know 100% for sure that it was one ring a year? Do you know 100% You're, you're cherry-picking a data. Uh, do you you know, can tell the difference between rings. No, no. Sometimes there's a wide ring, uh -huh. sometimes there's a narrow there ring. There can be. And, and, and you have and to put, scientists uh, who study you have to put this, trees together and you have to look at those. You're working real hard, And you assume where the rings overlap. You're working very hard. Carry on. Lead on. No, no, no. Yes, sir. You took all this time to study all this, and you don't believe, right, in God? I didn't say that. Okay. I do not believe the Earth is 6,000 years old. Okay. That's a very different thing. But you, you do believe, believe in God? This, I just don't want to discuss that. Okay. I think it's distracting. But you do believe... We're talking life. about the claim that there was a worldwide flood, and all the plants in the world were under salt water for a full year. Yes. Well, hang on. That hang there's on. a claim that somehow pyramids older than 6,000 years exist you were not washed away, that somehow there are 670,000 layers of ice from 670,000 years of snowfall, and you, nobody noticed. Okay, you just made, the only thing you, just you go by the, are the dating of today, because if that's... We go by all of it, the number, the pollen grains, the uh, tree rings, the ice, the ice layers, the tree and ring, the, the other tree fundamental like thing, everybody, layers. we have very accurate records of how much carbon dioxide people have put in the air. Hey, you know what's interesting? I, I promised Bill to so give him a walk through the arc, and he came up here and just tried straight, to attack me. Keep straight. And both attack what we do Carbon data, which goes back a few hundred and sometimes a thousand or so years, with radioactive data, what's which that? goes back Come billions of years. So, so, so tree go rings. Ahead, tree rings. You don't know it was one ring a year. Sometimes it's a little different. Okay, but you agree that it could be more than one ring a year because you could have more than one growth period a year. That's uh, that I don't know. I'm not oh yeah, you can. It, okay, we, I'll we've take seen your that. word for it. If climate's, I'll get out of your face. I like it. Bring uh, it on. Well, no, uh, you spent all this time, uh, your adult life, researching all this and everything. Yeah. So why don't you just take the time? Look at the creation that's here. I have taken the time. And God created that. He created man in his own image. That could and be, but I'm skeptical. You're skeptical. Just take the time and have faith and spend the rest of your well, life. See, this is here's the problem. Wondering about that. You no, know, here you here's the problem, you guys. As soon as you go back in time, as soon as you have any process of reasoning that requires a miracle, then it's not science. Then so, you, so you who, 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 who did you depart from your, your belief doesn't require any miracles. No miracles. No, no miracles? No. So, so everything happened. happened. No, everything well, happened by natural happened. processes. The other big problem that we disagree on. So everything happened by natural processes, yes, right? Yes, as far as we can tell. So everything, the universe, all life happened well, by see, natural processes. Well, see, we don't know. Processes. Here's another difference we have, I think. Okay. When, I find out, when I find out that there was a Big Bang, Edwin Hubble discovered the stars moving apart from each other in 1927 or so. Uh, I go, that's astonishing, that's amazing. I am part of this universe, and yet I have the ability to understand this little bit of it. That's amazing. Mr. Knight. And but... hang on, let me finish this one paragraph. So when I find out that I don't know what there was before the Big Bang or what it even means to ask the question, what was there before the Big Bang, I'm excited. That's fantastic. There's more to learn. There's another amazing discovery to be made. Whereas soul? other people are very troubled by that. Do you think you have a soul? Okay, let's Excuse let's me. let's uh, walk down uh, here. Can I just ask? Let's, uh, yeah, just, let's just, just let's just walk down. I, I can't tell. Okay. I don't know. What if you miss it all? Uh, I don't think I will. So I, I don't the, think I. Can I, I think, just say uh, speculation? Yeah. Please, speculation. yeah. What would the evidence look like if there was a full Earth flood? I don't know. I, I've hey, never seen it. Hey, I've Bill, never seen anything like it. We can speculate. But, Bill, or, can I, can I, I've never seen any can evidence I ask at you, all to suggest it. Can I ask you one question? Okay, you talk a lot, and that's great. But can I ask you one question that I, I really want to understand? If you promise you'll answer it. 
Well, but it, I'm not going to necessarily give you an answer you want, yes or no, to tree rings and years. I'm not, I'm and not stuff. talking about that. In your worldview, when you die, what happens to you? You're done. You're done. So what? And if that turns out not to be true, that would be very exciting. Okay, but if you say you're done, so you won't even know you're ever here. Apparently not. So then, why do you care what, what we're doing here? Why do you care about climate change? Why, why do you ultimately, because ultimately, when all these people die, they're done, and n nothing has any ultimate purpose, so why does it matter? Why does it matter ultimately? So, let's be clear. Okay. What we do is make more people. What yeah. organisms do is reproduce. But, but still, when they die, they're done, so why does it so matter? So my claim... Well, why does it matter ultimately? My claim is that not only your size and shape, number of fingers, eye color, and so on, is a result of the main idea in all of biology, evolution. Not only is evolution the main idea in biology, but what you feel is also a result of evolution. But, but why does that matter if you're done when you die? I mean, why does it, why does it all be matter? Everyone's done? They won't even know they're here? Why you're does asking this... fundamental existential questions. This is, yeah, this but, is but, great, but, Mr. Hand. But why? The idea is to pass your genes on to the future. To, but they, so they're going to they're gonna die and be done too. So but they'll become so they, maybe they will achieve great things and inspire us. Maybe they they'll not, find out what happened before the Big Bang. What, what does it matter? Maybe they'll they, determine whether or not the core of Jupiter is hydrogen acting like a metal, or if it's really metal. And why does that matter to them when they're done? Because maybe we will discover a new source of energy that will power the whole world based and, on this new physics. And why does that matter when they're done? Because what we do is live. The meaning of life is to live and yeah, pass you live, your genes okay, on. Okay, you live now, pass people. your genes on, and then you die, you're done. I still don't understand why... So did... why would you leave the world worse than you found it? I mean, if That's you... my question. What? Why would you be obsessed with teaching people that humans are not causing climate change? Why would you take a book's word for it when you could discover the world for yourself? Actually, That's you, the mystery you, Humans me. did cause climate change because we sinned against a holy God, and now we live in a sin cursed Okay, universe. so, you know, I spent some time in Japan last year. They don't have any tradition like that. What's wrong with them? Actually, there are cultures all over the world that do have such traditions. Well, but not the one I spent a lot of time with. Some, some people. And before they eat, they thank the people that created the meal because they, well, because inter they like It's interesting people. they even thank people. I mean, there's remnants of Christian thought all over the, or, That's an extraordinary all, claim. all over the culture. But I still want to know, when we're all done, everyone's done here, why will our conversation even matter? If we can empower a generation of young people uh -huh. to make scientific discoveries, uh -huh. to provide clean water, reliable electricity, and access to worldwide information to everyone in the world, that will be a very good thing. But then they're all, they die and they're all done, so why did it matter for them? Because they will pass their genes on but, and but become if, some new but thing. But if when you die, you don't even remember you were here because you know nothing, why, what's the purpose of living now anyway? See, so this is the difference between him and me. I find it extraordinary and amazing that I get to live right now at this time in the cosmos and be part of this amazing system hey, we call the universe. Guess what? I do too. I find it extraordinary. And I know that the reason I'm here is because God created people. Oh, I have another fundamental created, question for he, you. No, no, no. Well, no, no this list is related. Creation. No, 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 it's related. No, listen, Noah's listen Ark was Old Testament. Right? Listen to me and tell me why it's so extraordinary. Because as the Bible says, it's so evident that there's God. I mean, you look at DNA, a language system, an information system. We never see evidence that came about by natural processes. Well, I claim we do, so we disagree. Oh, can you give me an example? Example of what? Matter producing information. There's billions of bits, zillions of bits of information on this. So can you give me an example? Of, well, of her, she's producing. a good example. <laughs> yeah. She's here, but, but how did the information arise from matter? We don't know. So I, I find that extraordinary and exciting and wonderful. I do. We don't in know. the beginning, God That's created. Science. I think I know. I think that, like, I know that it all in, came from God. In, in the beginning, okay, God created. I'm open-minded but skeptical. And okay. so here's where we have difficulty. I have a question for you. Um, yeah. Why do you think that, like, most living things all have, like, a nose and two eyes and two ears and one mouth? Welcome to our world. This okay. is the main idea in all of biology, my dear. Yeah. This is the fundamental idea in life science. It's evolution. Okay, but, okay, so if you So ever this seen, is, welcome, okay. welcome. But can I say something? Please. If you've ever seen, like, paintings all by the same artist, they all look really similar, right? 
I guess. Yeah, so if we were all made by the same artist, how can we all have Okay, but what makes you say we were all made, made by the same artist? Because I believe that God created us all. Okay, so in other words, you went back to a miracle. Do you see what I mean? Well, so yeah, but how, how, could, be this, how could this not okay. be a miracle? Like, how do okay, you think well, you so could you, understand you, you everything? You said you can't explain how so, matter produces information. But for me, yeah, that's for me, that's exciting. Both not proof that there is an entity. And that, I, think, I think it's really exciting, too, that you can see how great and awesome this is. It's astonishing. So you and I are made of the same material as exploded stars. So you and I are at least one of the ways the universe knows itself. So are you saying that the stars so, created us? So for us... How is that any more less... I mean, how, are, how well, is to us, being it's, exploded it's, by a star more believable okay. than God created so, it, don't you have, so Don't you have a blind faith, Bill? No. Because you said no, everything I've comes out by natural it, I've processes. I've observed the stars moving apart. Have you observed stars form people? Not yet. But by have, the way, everybody, you are they? living at a time when it's very reasonable that we will find evidence of life on Mars or evidence of life on Europa, the moon of Jupiter, with twice as much hey, seawater as the Earth. There was just an article the other day where they now said, oh, I think it'll be another 1,500 years before we find well, evidence. I disagree with that. I work okay. at the Planetary Society, and okay. we don't feel but that But they've way. been searching for seen, years, and they've never found any evidence. What have you seen that evidence? does show that? Say it again? What have you seen that does like, show proof of that? Oh, well, so this year, last October, Scientists are convinced that water flows on Mars every Martian summer. Water flows down. There's all this sub-sand ice on Mars. Everywhere we look on Earth, everywhere we look, and we find just even the little dampness, there's something alive. But so do we find that on Mars? So not yet. So everybody, if we were to discover evidence of life on Mars, but does, does it have DNA? But, but okay, one way we'll but, not find it, Mr. Ham, is to not look. But, that but, will guarantee us not finding it. But it doesn't, it, you haven't found it, though. Not yet. No, I just want, want to But we have very reasonable sure. places to look. But By we do the way, find, the planetary science budget is about $1.6 billion. But, but we do find it's evidence point, of life all over Earth, right? It's 9% of the NASA budget. It's, it's less than a cup of coffee per taxpayer. Yet that's where we make these extraordinary discoveries. If we find life. But you did discover something? Not yet. That's why we want to build the next rover in 2020 to look, they've and been the one looking, after that in They've been looking for years, haven't they, for life in outer space? Yeah, well, the space and if I have space exploration is only 50 years old, Mr. Hammond. And if you do find something, what is that? What would that have? What would it mean to you? What would it mean to me? Yeah, would it, what, does it have DNA? I don't know. Or not. That would, we would have to check, wouldn't we? So, or would we look in a book? For See, it? they're just all speculative things. And, and they're they're and fantastic you, things. You, you know that they're you have fantastic found things like to speculate upon. Furthermore, why is it fantastic? It is not. I'll tell you why. I have purchased a Martian meteorite from a guy in Colorado that collects them. When you go to Antarctica and you find rocks on top of the ice, where did the rocks come from? There are no mountains anywhere around. They came from space. They're meteorites. Listen, I, I, don't, I don't understand how you think that we can understand everything that's out there. Like, are well, us little It's humans. a quest. I that's know. what's so wonderful. Know, but that's you, what's so inspiring. You, you act like, like you have you a process by which we can know exactly. the universe. Yes, we can know the cosmos and our place within but it. Like, but how do, why, do you think that, like, our technology and our like evaluation of science is as developed as it's going to get? No. So how do Absolutely you know not. that the stuff that you think you know now? Is it's going to change. I guarantee you, everyone. So then you're saying there that are you're things that I accept as true that are not, that are not true. Yeah. and that doesn't bother me that excites me what, how? we're going to make discoveries but how does it not bother you that things you believe you know are not true because we have a process by finding out the truth when i was a kid i, I, I am so, it so no but let me give it no it's in other words you're to me what you have is this simplistic worldview that doesn't is inconsistent with everything we observe that's what i find troubling but hang on let me give you this one thought you guys we find Martian meteorites on the Earth because Mars was hit with an impactor right around three billion years ago. Oh, stop right there for a minute. Wait, stuff wait, fell wait, into space. Wait, how do you know three billion years so ago? So let's just say it is okay. for now. All right. The same way we say there was a flood 6,000 years ago. Oh, no. It wasn't 6,000 years ago. It was 4,000. Okay. But okay. I have a basis so, that all I, that aside, I have a historical record. All that aside. Do you have a historical record? Yes, we do. So you well, look at this what, meteorite what's what's what is historical and you find record? evidence of the Martian atmosphere, the little bubbles in the rock. You find these shock patterns and you find the minerals from Mars. 
So it is not crazy, it's extraordinary, but not crazy to suggest that Mars was hit with an impactor through what's generally called a home in orbit, an orbit where it goes falls toward the sun but ends up on the Earth. You and I are descendants of Martians. Okay, that and is that's not, not crazy. That's not crazy. Is it crazy that you and I are descendants of Adam and Eve? Uh, we are descendants from a common ancestor. I don't but know is that it they crazy went by that, those names. Is it crazy that God made the first man and woman and we're descendants there's, of them? For me, there's no evidence of that. So is that crazy? But I, I wouldn't use that word. It's, what would you say? It's a uh, you're betraying your intellect. You're not no. using your head. Not so it, so saying. you're saying it is crazy. Uh, it's just it's frustrating. Which is frustrating. more crazy but, though? But you're saying we're descendants of Martians, and that's it's, not crazy. I say it is not crazy. It's extraordinary, but not crazy. Okay. And so, we have a process so by which we can prove that. Uh, that's prove, what's so oh, exciting. Oh, prove that we're descendants. Hey, Bill, I want, to, want you to do that for all these young people. Prove that we're descendants of, from Martians. I can't prove that right now. I, I don't know where you, you were we, the last I, minute and a half. I thought you said we, we could. We want to send spacecraft there. Okay. We have a process by which we can make this discovery. Okay. And it could be on Europa. There might be something what alive. What if there is no discovery? Well, that's we also extraordinary. That makes us even more unusual in the universe. Are you prepared to take, we have a book called the Bible that says it is the word of God who made all things. You said, here's what happened in the past. Are you prepared to take that and consider it in regard to the evidence you see in the present? So I claim, Mr. Ham, that I spent a lot of time with that. Did I read you? it twice. Uh -huh. I followed the guys around on the maps. Uh -huh. I decided that humans made the whole thing up. Okay, so. Just like this. But, but are you I'm skeptical. Do you guys, do you think, what do you say to young people when they ask you about the steel brackets? Uh huh. Did Noah have steel brackets? I very did well. Noah, did Noah have I, those I, extraordinary I, cranes? Listen, please, please let me answer. Okay. Okay. Did Noah have steel brackets? Actually, in the Bible. Within now, what do you say to young people when they ask you? Oh yeah, I would say in the Bible, uh, the Bible tells us within seven generations of Adam, they'll work as a bronze and iron. So yeah, he very well would, could have had steel brackets. That's exactly true. Yep. I mean, in the Bible, it actually says that about so iron. So my claim is that's absolutely not true. And and you said and if that. you study archaeology and anthropology, you will see the evidence for it absolutely being not true. Okay. Can Don't I, take I my word why? for it. Was there no, do you not see any sort of like metal or anything? Is it that took why? way longer than seven generations to get from the Stone Age to the Bronze Age but that's to the Iron Age. That, isn't it possible that people, for instance, how about, So I've have, evaluated the evidence, it's not okay, possible. Okay, how about this for a scenario? I can't fly, okay, it's not about, possible. How about this for a scenario? People didn't live to be 300 years old, it's not possible. Okay, how do you know that's not possible? I just say, I've just seen no evidence for it. Okay. Go ahead. So, how about this for a scenario? There's an event called the Tower of Babel. It was after the flood, sometime after the flood. People dispersed over the earth. Some people used stone tools. Some people were able to uh, develop a, a technology with iron. Uh, some people built wooden houses. Some people lived in caves. And that all happened as a result of that dispersion. But so we, live in the, we live in the present. And so when we go and see evidence of these cultures, then some people are interpreting as Stone Age to Bronze Age to Iron Age. It's very possible that different people did different things. I mean, if you came with me, we'd live in a so cave because I, I couldn't this build is a house. we disagree. Okay. I claim it's not very possible. It's absolutely impossible. Why? Based on the evidence that you see in archaeology, anthropology, but if you, and but nature, if you, geology. But if you say it's impossible, then you're stating something absolute. So you must have this all one evidence. Yeah. So you've got all evidence to know that that's I not have true? more than enough evidence to know no, that. No, do you have all evidence? Well, that's a... In other words, can you prove there is a God? No, you can't. In it's an a philosophical question. In an ultimate sense, I can't. Well, let me ask you Because I'm question. a finite being. But I can do this. I can say if there is a God, I'd see evidence of his handiwork. I'd see evidence of creation. When I look at DNA that builds life, I mean, regardless of whether we're talking about we've all got, you know, the two eyes and the nose, we're, we're built on DNA. And, and what I see is that we never see information coming from matter by itself. Well, I claim we do. I claim we do. We're well, give me an here. example. Give me an example. These people. You yeah, and in me. other words, you're saying we're here, therefore natural. So here's the, here's what I want you to think about. Here's where I believe Mr. Ham has trouble understanding nature. On my side of it, we claim the Earth is four and a half billion years old, and to take the time to get your mind around a billion is very difficult. Let alone four and a half billion. And in evolution, the fundamental idea in all of biology, the basis of modern medicine. Oh, we, stop okay, there so, okay, No, okay. no, okay. No. So we ex acknowledge that it's bottom up. We as humans design buildings 
from the top down. We have a, we make a drawing, we harvest lumber, and we build this thing. But that's not how evolution works. Evolution works from the bottom up. Nature, as the old saying goes, nature has her bad designs eaten by her good designs. And as time goes on over billions of years, things have changed to the point where you and I are here. So, so you guys, I really encourage you to take the time to understand a billion. If you started counting from the moment you were born, it would take you to your 31 years and a half to get to a billion. Day and night, no sleep. Okay, look, look. okay you, you've it's been talking about It's extraordinary. You know, uh, let me ask you a question. You said, um, you said that evolution is foundational to medicine. Yes. So doctors, I mean, they learn anatomy, which you study in the present, and they uh, look at all your physiology and uh, name one medical piece of technology that's dependent on molecules to man evolution. Uh, vaccines. Well, no, wait a minute. Vaccines are developed in the present by doctors looking at organisms in the present and, and understanding how they react to, to certain... So uh, the key word there certain... is understanding. Yeah, because you're observing it. Because you can actually... So do you, you distinguish act... between short-term evolution and long evolution? I'm not even sure what you mean by short-term evolution. By short-term, I mean, why do you need a different flu vaccine every year? Yeah, because uh, the organisms have uh, different uh, stra strains because uh, mutations and so on, but that's and not... Mutations happen ah, all the time. They do, but, but give me an example where mutation produces brand new information. I mean, when you look at um, uh, resistance so in bacteria, what's... antibiotic resistance in bacteria, usually it's due to a loss of information or it's an inherited resistance. Give me an example where mutation produces a brand new piece of information that never was there before. You and me. You and I. That doesn't make sense. Yes, it does. When you comes from the bottom up, the organisms that mutate no, favorably. No, no, no. But, but, we but, disagree but, on this. We no, disagree on the to, fundamental there has idea to be a of There has to be a mechanism for matter to produce. I mean, we disagree about biology, Mr. Ham. Let's move on to some of your a, other extraordinary can comments. I have, can I ask you a question? Please. You said that you don't really believe that anyone could have ever lived to 300 or more, but We've if seen they, no evidence of it. I have just a question, though. Let's say there was a lot less pollution back in the day, right? It's, there was a lot, People, it was a lot cleaner, so right? Let's, let's start right there. When you, you look at the archaeological evidence of ancient times, people's lives were much shorter. If what, a guy were 40 years old, skeletons uh, of dead people yeah, and people, their lifespan was much shorter, yeah, it's not, not longer. Yeah, it's not, it's not much shorter, it, it, and that's because, because of all our modern me medicines and also because of our uh, heating, eating uh, Well, it's really uh, two, two so big it, things. Uh, our diet. Invention of uh, farming and uh, sanitation. Yeah. Without sewers, you, but it's still it'd be a really hard to have a lot of It's still a maximum of about 70 years. I mean, the Bible does say that people lived for hundreds of years before the flood. That's all gone. We do know that aging so, occurs because because of um, when the when uh, chromosomes um, are, are duplicated, there's no, I, re I read the Bible that, twice. That I read the Bible twice. I don't remember any mention of chromosomes. So go no. ahead about that. No, it doesn't. It's, it's primarily a book of history, actually. Okay. That's what it primarily is—a book okay. of history, not a science book. But what do you mean by science? The word I mean, science means knowledge, right? Doesn't the word science mean knowledge? Well, it also means the process by which we know nature, which includes observation hypothesis, creating a test, testing it, compare what you thought would happen with what happened, and then coming up with a new hypothesis. We've been asking you about a test. Give an example where matter produces new information. Well, I claim we're looking at it all around us. Okay. Well, that's where we disagree. I, I think that's your answer. <laughs> I think that's the answer. So there's an old saying, if you find the watch in a field, the watch had to be created. But that was top down. Somebody designed the watch. Hey, let me ask you a question. It's not how evolution works. You agreed for me. Way. You agreed to come for me to walk you through. Yeah, the Yeah, so arc. go ahead. Walk me. You through. agreed for me to come and walk you through the ark. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that you want to do is start on level three, because you already had people suss it out. Where we have the teaching exhibits. You didn't want the. You didn't want the walk through the ark. You wanted to set. Us no, up I'll, I'll see the ark. Okay. Well, Mr. Hem, you make like extraordinary claims. Uh huh. So uh, we well, were... Yeah, yeah, you want to come up here to the third deck. Well, I was we afraid we wouldn't get to here, it. Yeah. Where we have our... Oh, yes, we would have. I would have taken you through. That's what I offered to do for you. So, so I'm so. more than happy to see the ark right now, Mr. Hamm. So, okay, well, let's go down here and uh, walk through the ark there. We really need to walk from the bottom up, and that's what I wanted to do. Then. Do you want to go back to the elevator? Uh, no, we're not going back to the elevator. We're going to go on the ramps.
You, you don't see the arc if you get on the elevator. <laughs> but if you want to go this from the bottom about, up. By the way, this is showing how ancient man was highly intelligent. You said Noah wouldn't have used cranes. How do you know Noah wouldn't have used cranes? I don't think he had steel cranes with fossil fuel powered You hydraulics. don't even need steel frames for cranes. How do you know he didn't well, use them? Well, why cranes? did you use them then? What's that? Why did you use the steel cranes with fossil fuel we, hydraulics? Well, we didn't say we were going to build this way, Noah did, because Noah, uh, the Bible doesn't tell us how he built the ark. We didn't even try to build it the way Noah did. We're building it, we're building it, the dimensions in the Bible, using modern tools. That's what we set out to do. We've never ever claimed we built it the way Noah did. You couldn't. Well, How long would it take Noah to have built this structure? I don't know. I don't know what technology. Do you know what tools he had? Uh, I know what tools he didn't have. Well, he didn't have our modern tools because he didn't live in our time. Right. But do we know what tools he had? We have a pretty good idea, actually. How do, how do we have that? The whole we world was destroyed by a flood. Well, that's where we disagree. Oh, I don't yeah. see how you have trees older than the flood. I don't see you have buildings older than the flood. Well, then we, get then, then we get down to how you, how you date the tree. You keep making these statements, but... I, I, I well, they're based on evidence. That's why I make them. <laughs> tree rings is not evidence. That's not to evidence. me, tree rings are absolutely evidence. No, it, it's, I've never it's seen a tree grow faster than trees grow. It's not evidence in the sense you're saying. It's evidence in the sense that we have facts that exist in the present. Correct? We have tree the facts rings. That, for we example, have, we have tree rings facts in the facts we exist in the present. We cut down a tree and count tree rings. The facts we uh, have in the present is we go shopping for Christmas trees, and we count the rings, and we compare it to how long it took the tree to grow. Yeah, but you, you can have multiple tree rings in a year, correct? But be that as it may. So then, you, then your interpretation of the age could be incorrect, correct? No, absolutely not. So your interpretation is 100% correct? My interpretation with respect to the age of the earth in this regard is absolutely no, correct. No, no, where are you and furthermore, you? Mr. Ham, you your keep, interpretation you keep, is absolutely wrong. You keep jumping. Oh, and so what I always so, wonder, so you know everything? You know all well, I didn't say that. In fact, well, how do you say I'm absolutely wrong if you, about if you this one thing? You are absolutely wrong. Well, we're talking about tree rings, and you well, just jumped We're talking about the age, the age of the earth. earth. Yes, that's what we're talking about. The age of the earth. This is why I'll say again. Okay, well, I thought we were I talking no about problem, tree rings. I have no problem. With people's religions writ large, how would you prove? Is not 6, how would years you prove old? to all these young people here, 100 percent absolute proof that the Earth is 4.6 billion years old? That's quite difficult. Over 4 billion, we can do. How do you do? Okay, over 4 billion, yeah. how do you do? Yeah. Well, using uh, potassium, uh, potassium argon is pretty good. Uh, I meant strontium rubidium, and uh, the process of the of geology. The, the many processes associated okay, with Okay, so if you're using radiometric dating techniques, I understand that. Um, elements that decay, radioactive elements that decay, uh, that is true. Um, you use those, but you have to assume things about the parent uh, element. Uh, I mean, do you know how many of the daughter elements were there to start with? Do, do you know for sure the rates of change haven't stayed? We do our best stayed. to know as closely as possible. But it's possible those things could be different, right? No. It's not? No. No, not, not when you're talking about one order of magnitude. No, there's no reason to think it's well, actually, uh, not the way Our scientists have done first. research to show that those uh, things... As I've said, our, our scientists do not impress me in any way, sir. They don't? What about the scientist who engineered this building? He's a biblical creationist. What would you say about well, that? I'm glad he learned the fundamentals of architecture. And so you can, do, you can do that and be a biblical creationist? Apparently. Oh, good. I, we agree on something. Yeah, apparently. I, I'm really but the Earth's not 6,000 years about old. The process of science, the yeah. philosophy, and the methodology. So, of science, so here's the thing, Mr. Ham. Yeah. What makes you, what makes you think that uh, strontium, that rubidium doesn't become strontium? Strontium doesn't become rubidium. I mean. What makes you think that? What makes you think that it doesn't always happen as we always observe everywhere in nature? What makes you think it's possible for that not to happen? Well, when we observe it, you know, at those decay rates, some of those decay rates, the half-lives are over um, multiple millions of years. Billions, right? billions in Okay, but you don't observe the billions. You only observe it in the present in a very short period. Right? So in other words, you believe, let me ask you, you can agree or disagree. You believe that there's a process by which the decay of rubidium and strontium would be not as we observe it today, that it would somehow be different in ancient times. Is no, that right? I didn't say that. I'm asking. All, all I said was, you are only observing decay in a limited sense in the present. You're extrapolating backwards. And plus, when it comes to the original, uh, the, the original uh, conditions, you don't know everything that was there, correct? 
we know a great deal of what was there by the process of science and inference. But you weren't, but you weren't there to actually. Test no, that's the, the man, that's the wonderful so nature of it. That's, all I'm trying, all I'm trying to do is so, say, so, uh, you extrapolate, you're extrapolating backwards, and you do have certain assumptions, you do have certain beliefs that could be wrong. That's, that's the process of science. Okay, but they could be wrong. We have a process by which we eliminate that which we that turns out to be wrong. When you make such broad statements, you're almost embracing science, but you're kind of missing it. Let me ask you again. Do you believe there's a way for the radioactive decay of strontium and rubidium to somehow have been different in ancient times? I mean, it's possible that um, uh, See, so decay rates are different than what they're interpreted to be today. It's possible decay rates change. In fact, there's evidence that decay rates so change. So here's my claim. So, as soon as you invoke that sort of reasoning, Mr. Ham, as soon as you invoke that, you are invoking a miracle. And that is no longer what we consider I, I science. I didn't in the just invoke a miracle. I mean, there are things that change on this earth just because of the laws of nature and, and uh, because but of... Do you believe that the decay of strontium and rubidium changes because of the laws of nature? And can you explain Absol the laws of nature? Absolutely, but... That would make that possible. But is, oh, well, can you explain the laws of nature? No, see, for us... On Where did those laws again, come from? That's the, um, a wonderful question. And we believe it comes from the nature of subatomic particles, based on evidence. Uh, what's this? Hey, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ham, you should sell my book. Why don't you sell my book at your store? Oh, they, these books we aren't selling. We're warning people about these books because they picture Noah's Ark as, as a bathtub, which it wasn't. It was like this big ship that you're in. Made of concrete and uh, not seaworthy. <laughs> uh, you know what? what? We, ne we never built this uh, to, to float. We built it at, it's designed as a ship and built as a building for tourists to come through. So it actually is sitting on... Uh, so what's the difference years. between that and this? Um, I think the size is a big difference. These boats are too small, you mean? In, in these... Okay. Explain, well, what's the philosophy behind the, the exhibit? I guess I don't the philosophy have... behind this exhibit is really to say that, unfortunately, a lot of people have pictured Noah's Ark as a bathtub ark. When you take the dimensions in the Bible, it's a ship like the one that we built here. In other words, this is too small. It's so not that it's too small, it's just unbiblical. And it is too small, but it's unbiblical. That's the whole point. The, the Bible's description is 300 cubits by 50 cubits by 30 cubits. Those okay. bathtub arcs are And you've there. inferred the size of a cubit based on the... Oh, the... oh, everyone knows that a cubit generally is from the elbow to the tip of your fingers, and there's different cubits in history. We, we chose a particular cubit uh, based on research that our researchers have done. There's different size cubits. So this is seven family members building a structure as big as this one? Actually, there were eight. Eight. Yeah. Wasn't one of them a kid? Uh, well, actually, Noah, had, Noah and his wife had three sons and wives when God spoke to them. So I wouldn't say he was a kid. I'd say they were all married, just like the Bible says. See, the point is, none of us were there when Noah was alive. And a lot of people have an evolutionary view of history. They take your view of history and they say, oh, those sort of people before us weren't as good as us. They couldn't have built a great ship like this. By the way, we hired lots of contractors to help us build this. It's very possible that Noah hired contractors too. Then again, if you, if you over a number of years have some very talented people, carpenters like the people that built this, you can build some uh, fantastic structures. I mean, it's, it's very... From a biblical perspective, Noah was highly intelligent. And there could have been all sorts of technology that was uh, developed by them. So, hi, you guys. See, what we're trying to do, so, what we're trying to do so is to be able to, is it, is to, be able to help mums and dads be able to teach their children that they're made in the image of God, there's purpose and meaning in life, that uh, God's son stepped into history to die on a cross, be raised from the dead, to save them from eternity. Hey. You want to teach them that they're just animals and when you die, you're done. So let me ask you this. Isn't that right? No, hang on, let me ask you this. But isn't that right? Yeah, hang on. Wasn't Jesus in the New Testament? No. Where's Je when did Jesus come along? Oh, it's interesting. The very first verse of Genesis, in the beginning, God, the word for God is 
basically you could call it a uniplural noun. It says God is one but more than one. Let us make man in his own, own image. So in other words, in other words, when God's son stepped into history to be Jesus Christ, the God man, he becomes a God man uh, 2000 years ago, but Jesus existed from eternity. I see. Oh, he's quite a craftsman. And there were ancient well, you dinosaurs. Must, you, must, you must admit, okay, how about saying something positive for me? You must admit, these are quite exquisite exhibits, right? They're very troubling. Yeah, they're, but they're beautifully done, aren't they? They look like a modern Amish workshop where people eschew modern technology. Um, well, I'm very it's skeptical. Not, it's not an Amish workshop. Well, that's what all. it looks like. The actually, way of that rope. actually, by the way, a hundred. How did people? Hundred, hundred how did Amish, people in the Middle East get bamboo? A hundred Amish craftsmen built this. Built this. Oh, well, there you go. Very talented. Yeah, aren't they? I mean, it looks it's very Amish. Aren't, to me. they, aren't they talented? Yes. So you admit? Do you want to admit? And, and you know what? It's... They trust in God, and they're able to build this phenomenal place. So let me ask you this other big question. Okay. Uh, hi, you guys. Hey. You. Yeah, I've read that this place costs a hundred million dollars. Is, uh -huh. that right? uh -huh. is this the best use of a hundred million dollars? Well, really? let me. Well, let me ask Think you this. of all the things um, you could do. Well, let me ask you this. All a the help you could provide people. Uh, okay, a politician using two billion dollars for a political campaign. Would you? Are you prepared to say that about every person who spends money, every project in America? Are you prepared to say that about billion-dollar cruise ships? Uh, are you just singling us out, or are you prepared to say that about everyone? No, but you make the extraordinary claim that what you do is No, that's superior. what I'm asking. I'm asking to be consistent. You say, you're, you're questioning... So let me ask, what's this guy? You're, Who do you're we have questioning... Here? So we have... This looks like uh, an apatosaurus or, or something? Yeah, it's a sauropod, yeah. And why are... They are juveniles. Um, yeah, they'd be juveniles. Yeah. And uh, and they uh, lived on the ark. What became of them? Well, what became of the dodo bird? Became extinct. Well, humans killed the dodo bird. So yeah, but you with lots of other hundreds, humans killed these hundreds organisms? and hundreds and hundreds of species of animals have become extinct, right? Considerably more than Actually hundreds. Actually, thousands, really. Millions. But yes, yeah, so. I don't know about a million. Yeah, well, we do. So, what your claim is that. I'm talking about this, land animals. Let me just understand. Ed, land animals. No, I'm not the talking family, about sea creatures. I'm just okay. talking about air dwelling. Your claim is that a family creature. built this enclosure mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. ancient sauropods. For, for each kind and of And the land sauropods animal. disappeared. For each, for each kind of land. Oh, lots of animals have disappeared. I mean, that's so, why we have endangered But they happened, it happened in the last 4,000 years. Oh, yeah. And there's no record of it in scripture, there's no record of it in Asia, there are no fossils of it. Actually, what's, what's interesting in scripture, there is, a, there is an animal, it's called the largest land animal God made in Job 40, and when you read the description, it actually sounds like a description of something like a sauropod. Something like a sauropod. Mm -hmm. it's for us on the other side, that's, that's, that's not enough, Mr. Hammond. Now, you, you believe dinosaurs evolved into birds, right? Yes, sure. So that's why you, 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 you can't have dinosaurs living beside man. No, furthermore, it's an interesting fun fact. Uh -huh. The amount of time between the Stegosaurus uh -huh. and uh, the ca catastrophe that finished off the ancient dinosaurs is more than the amount of time from the impact to humans today. Okay, you today. said fun fact. Prove the fact to me. Well, that's what we do in science. Yeah, but prove it to, prove to all well, these people right here. It's difficult to prove right here with nothing around me. However, I claim you all can go to the American Museum of Natural History in New York and see the evidence. You can go to the Smithsonian and see yeah, the see, evidence from my side. You'll see dinosaur skeletons, but... but Not only dinosaur skeletons, but you, don't see, but you will observe the sediment in which they are trapped. Yeah, but you never saw them trapped. Absolutely not. Right. Okay, that's, so, well, that's all you really can't. When you look at the sediment around ancient dinosaur bones, you will find where, uh, where potassium and argon have chemically replaced calcium. And then you can infer how long ago that uh, lava solidified. Well, you know, you know what's interesting? There's been a lot of work done to show when 
in New Zealand, for instance, are examples, and we've got documentation of this, that when lava comes out onto the Earth's surface and is dated using potassium argon, it dates to millions of years old because they found argon from the mantle comes up and makes it look old. So in other words... Well, what you have to do is compare the ratios, Mr. Ham, with the chemical replacement of the argon, calcium, and potassium. You're not just making this stuff up. They're yeah. very diligent about it. Yeah, but my, my point is... This never happened, just so we're clear. See, well, Go ahead, lead Bill, on. Bill, one of the things is you don't want to listen to answers. You just keep making I've heard statements. your answers. I've no, read your books. You sir. keep making statements, and then you ask questions, and then you go on. You won't listen. I'm listening. Your claim, as I understand it just now, is that potassium argon dating does not indicate that ancient dinosaurs are 60 or 150 million years old. Well, potassium argon dating, like all dating methods, are based on a series of assumptions that are fallible. Which we call science. Go ahead. Assumptions, fallible assumptions are science. Fallible assumptions. Yeah. My claim is that the potassium argon dating uh -huh. that you will come across at the American Museum of Natural History or the Smithsonian is not fallible. You know they used potassium a... argon dating on the uh, actually lava dome uh, that was produced at Mount St. Helens. Uh, and as you know, that was produced uh, after it erupted in May 18th, 1980. I was so, there. Right. So, so when they use potassium argon uh, dating on the lava dome, it dates dates. It doesn't date to just you know 20 years old or because uh, it came years from old. the middle of the earth. You have to wait for the chemical replacement of calcium and potassium and argon. And sir, really, you're, you're cherry way, picking way. a couple no, facts no, no, from a sentence. No, no, no. You're cherry picking. In other words, when the lava solidifies, then the rock should be zero years old, right? No. Okay, all right. No. So the ro rock is ancient. It's from below the Earth's crust. All due respect, that what you just said is not right. So, so then you've got a problem because when, it, when you see that lava, it's already got argon, potassium there. You don't know how long. The we work very hard to figure out how long ago it happened. That's well, the well, business well, of them, science. Tell them how you know how it happened. So you look at many, many rocks. You look at a lot of argon and a lot of potassium and a lot of calcium and you infer how long it takes rocks to cool and how long it takes for the chemicals to replace. Okay. And then you shine x-rays through them and look at the crystals. You infer. It takes great diligence. Okay, you infer. You yeah, figure it, out. Would you, you prefer that term? You yeah. figure out how but, long but, ago. But, that could, but, you could, but you're making assumptions doing that. It could be wrong, right? Your word assumption is my word evidence, I think. No, Mr. Ham, no, we no. just disagree about this at an extraordinary level. You know why? Because there's a clash of worldviews, because we have a different starting point. Your starting point is everything happens by natural processes, evolution is fact. My starting point is God's word is true. And I'm, I'm saying when I start with God's word, I can explain why DNA is an information system and a language system. I can explain why there are fossils over the earth. I can explain why there are flood legend cultures all over the world. Because the Bible's history that makes sense of that. Your history, your history, it's not history, your belief about the past doesn't make sense of that. It doesn't make sense of DNA. It doesn't make sense of of where humans came from, doesn't make sense of, of the fossil record. I claim it does, okay. See, to an extraordinary degree. Uh, uh, so everybody understand, in the process of science, as soon as you work backwards and introduce a miracle, a miraculous event, then it's no longer science. It's, a, it's, a, it's another type of worldview. And then I want everyone to understand that when you go backwards and say everything happened by natural processes, that that's Bill's religion. His religion is there's no God, the Bible's not true, and everything happened by natural processes. He has a religion, I have a religion. His is based on blind faith, mine is not. Because when you start with God's word, it makes sense of the world that we see, and we can use observational science to confirm it. So what's the difference between science and observational science? Well, again, the word science, it comes from the Latin scientia, correct? Yeah. Right. And it means to know. Let's, let's change it to the process of science. No, 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 it means to know. What's the difference between the process okay. of science so how do you, and so how observation do you, how do you define science? Define science as a process by process. which we make discoveries about nature. Okay, so science as a process, okay, you, you can use the word science in regard to that. What about when you're talking about knowledge about the past? That, knowledge about the past. Okay, so that's science. Absolutely. So the Bible is a science textbook because it's it's a textbook of historical science. I would science. not in absolutely no way consider the Bible but a science textbook. It's a book of history, right? So it's historical science. 
See, it's that's not, a word I've never heard before. It's knowledge about so the So I past. met you. I never heard the expression historical science. I'm glad I could bring it to your attention. So there's a difference between observational science yeah. and historical science. Oh, absolutely. Because in, when you your five senses in the present, you can build a great ship like this. But using it's your five problem. senses in the present, you can't, you can't prove we came from Martians. I will someday, find, I hope, be able to prove whether or not life is on Mars. It's not exactly the same well, question. You know, you know what's interesting? When the Human Genome Project mapped the human genome, they said there's only one race of people. You know what that confirms? The Bible. Because we all go back to Adam and Eve, we're all one race. Uh, so I don't think it confirms the Bible. It just makes the Bible consistent with nature on this one point. Oh, well, that's good. I'm glad we agree on that. Yeah. I'm glad we consistent agree. with nature on this it is one point. It is consistent. Yeah. So, yeah. It is. But your, your evolutionary view, would you say there were different races that evolved at different times? No. So there's only one race? Only one race of humans. People run this test all the time, Mr. Ham. So, no, Mr. Ham, if do, a Norwegian, do, when, if when a, an Australian has sex with a pop with a, uh, an Australian has sex with a uh, pe person from China, all you get is a human. Okay. You don't get any new so, things. So, how did in history did did an ape-like ancestor give rise to hu humans? Where did we become human? And welcome what, what, to our world. We struggle with this question all the time. So, 100,000 years ago, 150,000 years ago, so a it, million years ago, so it, a million and a half, uh, So if we become human, years. are we different to the animals? Yes, you can run this test too. Yeah, so we're different. Yeah. So is it possible that humans were created separately by God and we didn't evolve from... I've seen no evidence for that. Okay, so There's no evidence. So you, so you don't know when we evolved from... We work very hard to try to figure it out. Okay, but so you're assuming we did evolve from some ape-like ancestor? Absolutely. The evidence is overwhelming. What, what evidence? The evidence that there are so many animals, remains of animals, that are almost human. Not quite. So many remains of animals that are almost uh, primates. It's a spectrum, a transition. It's a fantastic. It's I mean, wonderful. It's an amazing discovery. But you, but you, I, I don't know. Okay, I, I'm perplexed because you said before we, we don't know. Was it a hundred thousand? Was it was it, when was we don't? But it know. wasn't a billion. So, well, you don't have. It all wasn't. The, so you it don't wasn't have, four thousand. So you don't have all these supposed transitions that you could just show all these young people. We have the supposed transitions. Yeah. Oh, we, so we do know when we came from. I, I people cases. argue about this very diligently. Furthermore, by the way, everybody, through the process of science, I guarantee you, there will be changes. Pluto was not considered, Pluto was considered a planet. Now people think Pluto isn't really of a different origin. Well, we doesn't do orbit in the same plane, so we change the definition. Science changes. That's the fundamental thing, everybody. Science changes. So your views you have today could be wrong? Absolutely. Well, if you could be wrong, but you see. Here's where we differ. Being wrong by less than a percent is not the same as being wrong by 100%. So we're wrong by 100%. You're wrong by 100%. So you must have 100% of knowledge to know I'm wrong by 100%. Absolutely. I have 100% knowledge that your worldview is wrong. Okay. Uh, that I've got. All right. I don't know anyone else who would claim they know 100% of everything. I just don't know. Well, not 100% of everything. 100% oh, okay. of this claim. Your claim. That claim. But you have to know 100% of everything to know that that claim That's is absolutely true. Absolutely not true. You so, said absolutely. That's 100%. So it's not true. You do not have to know 100% of everything to know that the Earth is not 6,000 years old. Okay, that's so not a criterion. So if you don't know 100%, that's, uh, that's if, you, bad if you don't know 100%, then you could be wrong. Though. I follow what you're saying, but I'm not wrong about the age of the Earth not being 6,000 years old. I am not wrong about that one thing. How do you know for sure? Because I've looked at the evidence. What Tell you what else. The sun will rise tomorrow. I can't prove it. You can't prove that the sun will rise tomorrow. So are you not going to count on it? You're going to presume the sun won't rise tomorrow? I think you will count on the sun rising tomorrow, won't you? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But, but, but you can't prove I'm just, it. I'm, I'm just interested. You as can't to prove what... it right now. No, you can't prove it. But you know what? If I'm in the present, like I was this morning, and saw the sun, I watched it. Good. Did you, did you see ape-like creatures turn into people? No. It happened too long ago. OK. That's the point. So if it, my, here's where we disagree. My understanding is you believe that if you didn't see it, it didn't happen, or you couldn't prove that it happened. Well, if you, I believe if you that if you there. have the system of evidence 
you can show beyond a reasonable doubt. If, if, you're not, if you're not here in the present with your five senses, and you're talking about something in the past when you weren't there, or, it, or no human was there. Either. Titanic sank. I wasn't there for that. Yeah, but there, there were people that were, there were historical records. Actually, we have a historical record called the Bible. God's always been there, and he has recorded for us who we are. So we have historical records also on my side of it. A number of I've neutrons in water. I've, I've never dug up a historical record about billions of years. I mean, you, you, you make interpretations, but where is it written down? It's not, so everybody, the reason we believe the Earth is four and a half billion years old is based on looking very carefully at rocks. And yes, it's not written in English on the rock how old I am as a rock, but it is written in scientific sense. And you don't have to take my word for it, you all. You all can go to universities. You all can take geology courses, and you can learn this for yourself. Hey, I took geology courses. I never saw it. part of the I mystery. Never, I never saw the age written in the rock. Well, you didn't take enough geology, I guess. Well, I, I just didn't see a label on it. It's not a label, but the, it almost like, did. You know, in the Bible, in the time of Joshua, it says the sun stopped in the sky. Why yeah. would it do that? Well, there's, there's no a, evidence. Yeah, but that was a miracle of God. But is, is the Bible so everybody is the Bible scientifically wrong in saying the sun sun could stop or looks to me as absolutely wrong that one literal claim so a couple things everybody as soon as you go back and invoke a miracle the sun stopped in the sky because of a miracle that's not science in other words your arbitrary definition of science is I don't claim it's arbitrary. You, can have, you can't the supernatural has nothing to do with it Supernatural has nothing to do with it. Okay, that's your definition. Pretty much. Okay, but why should I accept your definition? Because we have so much evidence for it. Why should I accept we, we your definition? Social, yeah, I know. Furthermore, let me ask you this. You've heard, you've heard the, you're Australian. You know this expression, separation between church and state? That's yeah, not in the Constitution. Where is it? Well, it was in a letter that Thomas Jefferson wrote to Danbury Church to, right. to talk about the fact that, the, that they were not going to have a state church like was in England to impose uh, beliefs on people. So we have that here in the United States. We celebrate that. Actually, in the United States right now, um, the government is imposing beliefs through the education system that we came about by natural processes. So that's really their religion. That's the religion of the state. Uh, and they're I using my tax dollars to do it, by the way. So, uh, we claim that science... What science? That the process that we teach in science class... Okay, science. so, so your, defi religion. your definition of science, that you can't have the supernatural, is what they've adopted in the public education system, correct? Well, it's what science, conventional mainstream science... But who decided that science. definition? Who decided the supernatural? It's a process. Who decided the supernatural has nothing to do with it? It's a process. Who decided the supernatural has nothing to do with it? Uh, thousands, millions of people over the last few centuries, since the Enlightenment. They said that the supernatural has nothing to do so with that science. science does not have the supernatural. So it's, so it's people who decided that definition. Absolutely. So it's an arbitrary definition. I wouldn't use the word arbitrary. It's a very carefully thought through philosophical process. I, I, I say it's not very carefully thought through because if you disallow the supernatural, then you're assuming you know everything. No, I disagree with that. I claim we don't know everything, and that's wonderful and empowering. Okay. Then, You're, I claim then, you say you, you know, know if you, everything. If you don't know everything, right, you agree with that, you don't know everything. Absolutely. Would you allow someone to teach the possibility that God created them in the public schools? No. Okay. Not in science class. Mm -hmm. In religion class, is history class, philosophy but, class, but, but it's not science. But you said your belief was everything happened by natural processes and they're teaching that religion in the science class. Well, you're calling it a religion. Yeah, we're it is. You're calling it the process of science. No, no, but it is a religion. So you can teach... It's a belief. Teach your worldview in a different it, class, but not in science class. But what, yeah, what you're saying is your worldview you want taught in the public education system. In science class. Okay, but my worldview you won't allow. Not in science class. Okay, so, so what, you're not allowing it because you've decided there's no supernatural. Not in science class. You, you, science you, is everything that is not the supernatural. Okay, that's Let's that, call it not supernatural but your, class. But that's your Would definition. You okay, that? not supernatural class. So in other words, you want to eliminate the supernatural. And you want these young people to believe we came about by natural processes. When you die, you're done. But it's great being alive. And hey, there's purpose and meaning while you're alive. And oh, think what you're passing on to the next generation. And when they're, when they're done, they won't even know what, that they were here. And hey, isn't this great? You're, you're all going to be done. 
It is great. Okay. Well, hey, can I show you something in here? Yeah. That's great. Wow. No wonder. No wonder young people have problems with purpose and meaning and turn to drugs and sex and suicide. What, why would it be? Would, would it be wrong for a young person to say, "I'm going to be done. Won't know I'm here anyway. Why don't I kill myself?" Would it be? People do that all the time. And that's okay. No. Why? Because we want people to be productive and happy. Yeah, but if they're going to be done and won't remember, what's wrong with them saying? Because I'm life has great meaning for us on my well, side. While you're here. Yes. But what about when you got? When you we got? don't know what's going to happen. Can I show you something in here? So you guys know James Randi? Million dollars, a million dollars, and he carries the check with him for any paranormal effect that he cannot reproduce. He's a magician. He's 86. No one's ever collected the million dollars. Never. Psychics, people who believe they can find water under the ground. Let me show you something. No can one's I, ever gotten the money. Can I show you something? Uh, not yet, thanks. Hey, Mr. Knight, can I quick tell you something? Yeah, yeah. Well, so we're obviously not quite as old or smart as you. You might be smarter so, than I am. I no, don't know how smart you are. But there's nothing that we can say that can convince you, but I just want to let you know that we all prayed for you as a youth. And we all thank you for talking to us today. Okay. Yeah, thank yeah. you. And thank you, uh, Mr. Hamm. Yeah. Yeah, thank you I hope that someday you visit, you get out of this area and visit the American Museum of Natural History. I'm sure they visit the visited Second Museums. Museum. Have you visited Second Museum? I really encourage you to take And we're actually 14 hours from home to see this museum today. Yeah. So. Hey, where'd you come from? Iowa. Northwest. Can, hey, can I ask you guys a question? There are yeah. secular museums all across America that uh, would portray Bill's view. And we have one creation museum. We have one ark like this. Do you think it's great that Christians can actually give their view like this? I think it's amazing. amazing. So let me ask you this. To me, Christians came along in the New Testament, but the floods from the Old Testament. Right? Is that not? Do I not have that? No, that's correct. Well, the word Christian wasn't invented and, and, until. So why uh, aren't Jewish people Christian? It's, it's just part of the biblical history. So why hey, are can, Jewish people not I tell you Christians? What, I, I've heard your history, right? Your evolutionary history. Will you give me just a couple of minutes to share ours? Uh, yes, we walk along. Yeah. Okay. So, even though you don't believe it is, we do believe the Bible is God's word. I see. And, I and, see no evidence for it. Okay, that's fine. And God says he created everything in six days. He created man and woman in the image of God, which is why we can speak to each other. It's why, and the fact that he created is why we have the laws of nature so and I, the laws of logic, because they didn't come about by natural processes. Give me this one thing now. This creature doesn't exist right now, right? And the claim is that this creature and this creature, creature and these people lived at the same I, time. I, I know your belief is I don't. No, but I'm also, just, then, one, I'm fundamentally, not, not. these people look to me like Northern Europeans, like uh, Norwegians or Scandinavians. Uh, but people from the Middle East, their, their facial features aren't like that today. But see, we, we don't know what Adam and Eve actually originally looked like. Because so that would be historical science. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, I admit you that. weren't there to see what they exactly. look like, so you're inferring those facial yep, features. Exactly. Just like you infer your particular views, and mine do come from a written source, it comes from the Bible. From, mine from, come a from, record, the evidence from a record that claims to be from the God who created us all. Okay. okay? Even though you don't believe that, it claims that it's 3,000 times to be the Word of God. 3,000 times in the book? The and, same book. Oh, yeah, it says this is the Word of God. Yeah. Less, so and. and it says God created a perfect world and man sent perfect marriage. So in the perfect world, mm -hmm. all of these creatures were vegetarians. That's correct. There was no predation. That's correct. There were no ecosystems as we know them today. Well, there were different ecosystems. I see. Everybody depended on plants. The, yes, plants and fruits. So Genesis 1, Your claim just literally is that there were stegosauruses, brontosaurus or uh, potosaurus, this uh, mammal, this other mammal with these big fangs, mm -hmm. and this cat with a lynx-like cat with the fangs all coexisted, and they were all vegetarian. Yeah, there's lots of, lots of animals today that have sharp teeth that are vegetarian too, as you know. And they, they, they don't God, look quite like this. That God made the first marriage. No, they don't look quite like this. And, and you know why? Because the Bible made, God says, God made kinds. Since Noah's Ark, when the kinds came off the ark, we've had a lot of speciation in, within a kind. 
See, that's why you were wrong when you said all the species couldn't fit in the ark because species, again, kingdom, plum, class, order, family, genus, species is man-made classification system. And the Bible uses the Hebrew word min, which means kind, and we would say kind from the research we've done uh, is more akin to the family level classification. You know, dogs, a lot of research done. You can show all these species of dogs, you can connect them all, and obviously the dog family is probably the, the kind level. And so here you need two dogs on the ark, not the different species. So we're very skeptical of that on the outside. Oh, you can be skeptical, that's fine. But what we're Just saying. Just on the is, outside, there isn't enough time. Oh, actually, actually, you know what? Situation. One of our scientists, Dr. Nathaniel Jensen, who you said was incompetent as a PhD from Harvard University, he's actually done a lot of work on genetics and shows you, you, you we actually can have speciation occurring very rapidly. Would you, prepare, would you be prepared for me to send you one of his papers? So I've read his papers. Oh, and, and so you just don't believe them, right? Well, I, I think he's got it wrong. He cherry picks. Okay, so I'm sure he's got it wrong. So I'm not a, I'm not a full-time geneticist, but I did... I can certainly see that he's got it wrong. Okay, okay let me ask you this question. Um, if we're just an animal... Just an animal? What's, what's better than being an animal? Okay. It's marvelous. As animals, we're able to understand the cosmos and our place within it. It's worth celebrating. Okay, what okay. do you mean, just an animal? So we came, we came from animals, right? We're, yes. not made, we're not made in the image of God. Uh, I, I don't know. I've never uh, met him or her. Okay. So... I, I, I've looked. We, we actually have a zoo and we have some animals in the zoo now none of them wear clothes and you do well, i'm pleased you do by the way i'm really pleased you do. none of them wear clothes why do humans wear clothes uh to keep warm protect ourselves well, from the sun okay it's fantastic so, technology that enabled us okay there are parts of the world where people don't wear clothes that's true they don't but you know what right now it's really hot <laughs> so they, should, they, should, if it's just to keep warm um, when it's hot, should we take them off? I, I, I don't really follow you, but generally most of us do take off clothes when it gets hot. Yeah, but not in public. It depends where you are, sir. I've traveled to parts of the world where people have no okay, trouble taking okay. their clothes off. So, so would you have no trouble not wearing clothes? Uh, in this environment, it would be very difficult to not wear clothes because it snows here. It's cold. Yeah, but it's not snowing now. It's hot. So right where now. are you going with this? Tropical I, I, tribes don't wear clothes. As they migrate yeah. from the equator, they do. Yeah. yeah. Skin color depends yeah, on but, our ancestors. But why do all these humans wear clothes? Why do humans wear clothes? I mean, the bulk of humans wear clothes. That's because there's so many humans. Where are you going with this? God gave clothes because of sin. And God gave clothes. Yeah, he did. What evidence do you the, have that God the, gave us clothes? The, fa the fact that animals don't wear clothes. No, no other. An no, an you say we're animals. No other animal wears clothes. Okay, can you name another animal that lives both in the tropics and in the Arctic? Yeah, but that, 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 but when you're living in the in the summer, living in the winter, you can take them off, put them on. Do, we, we, we have the ability to change and put them on and off. Birds fly south. Yeah. Birds have much more so, plumage in the winter than okay. they do in the it's summer. It's summer right now, so everyone should everyone can take their clothes off right There's now. Some parts of the world where they do, sir. You know, that there's a moral basis for it. Because you, the, uh, uh, what you're giving me is just opinion. There's no reason. Therefore, it's not my opinion that there are places in the world where people oh, no. don't wear clothes. Totally That's not my that. opinion. That, but, it, but right now, you're just giving me opinions as to why we wear clothes or don't. You're talking about weather. You, you, you don't have a basis for it. I don't have a basis for why people wear clothes? No, you don't have a moral basis for it. A moral basis. Here's another thing we disagree about, everybody. People in the scientific community claim that what we feel is a result of evolution. So that we have sympathy for each other, that we get angry with each other, that we work very hard to raise our children, provide them with resources, is deep within us. It's part of who we are. It is not a result of a top-down uh, issuance of laws. That's the claim in science. And we observe this in other species. Okay, I'll let you say that. You know what, uh, young people and everyone here? God gave clothes because of sin. The fact that we're wearing clothes is a reminder that God killed animals and clothed Adam and Eve, the first blood sacrifice that are covering for their sin, pointing towards the fact that someday one would come to die for our sin, die for your sin, Bill, and die for mine, be raised from the dead, and offer a free gift of salvation. And he offers it to you, too. Um, thank you. And, and you I'm very skeptical that sin caused us to wear clothes.
It may be very skeptical. That's okay, but it is a reminder to you that God provides salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God is raised from, from the dead, you'll be saved. And you'll be like so many of these people here. So my understanding, you, you were not born again, were you? You just started with this. Were you born again? Jimmy I'm, Carter was here recently, right? Absolutely. He was born. I'm born again. You were born again, okay. Absolutely. If you're not born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. We're born of a woman, and then we're born again by the Spirit of God. For those who receive that free gift of salvation, you can be born again too. You know, you know what the Bible says? If you're not born again, you suffer a second death, which is eternal separation from God. And I'm not going to suffer that second death. Now, I don't want you to suffer that second death. I really don't, Bill. I know you don't. I would prefer that you weren't indoctrinating young people with anti-science. But this gives us different worldview. I, I, world I want you to be born again too, so that I so don't think don't it's going to happen, Mr. See, when you die, you're not done. If you're not born again, you're going to be separated from God for eternity. I don't want that of you. God offers you a so free what gift about, of salvation. As I asked you this earlier, what about people who have never heard your heard of your ministry? What about people in other parts of the world, uh, in Asia especially? who have no under, no knowledge of your or the book. The Bible makes it very clear that everyone knows there's a God, it's evident. And God is a sovereign God. He takes missionaries to them, He takes His word to them. So if what happened see, all those he, millennia before, all those centuries before missionaries showed up, those people were all condemned? It's a philosophical question. It's not really, I'm not a biblical scholar. God gave man, but it is something God to gave man stroke my chin about. God gave man his word and promised his salvation right from the beginning. And and that message, the Israelites were there as a people to preach to the world, to give them that what message. About, uh, and God showed himself in, in, in all Vietnam. sorts of ways. What about in Vietnam or Laos, where they never heard of this, ever? There's a sovereign God who will take the message to them, and not only that. But only very recently, only in the last hundred years or so. Well, if you see... So everybody before that was doomed? It's very troubling, no, sir. No. Lead on. Show, show me some more. Bill, you won't listen. I'm listening very carefully, sir. You're no. making extraordinary claims. You know what the Bible says in Romans 1? You know, like everybody else in the world, it's evident there's a God. Because you haven't shown me any evidence that everything happened by natural processes. You know underneath it all there's a God. You know he, you know he created. I, no, I don't. No, sir. I really have to disagree with you on camera. That's fine. Okay, well, let's, let's move in uh, to the next room. So... Where we run into trouble is when we go to pass laws. So the founding fathers here in the United States agreed that we're not going to pass laws based on religions because of all the trouble they had sorting out based on what? religion. we not respect No, they didn't establish. say that. They said that they wouldn't establish a, a state church. They wouldn't make any laws that respect with respect to religion. The establishment means the setting up. It means the setting up the state as a church. Actually, the state, state is set up as a church. This is your claim. Yeah, because it's it's saying that you can't teach about God in the public schools, but you can teach we all claim by nature. You can't right. teach about God in science class. This is the... Hey, can, can I just let, ask let's, you? Let's from now on call it not supernatural class. You okay, so teach I, about I know that you miracles I know, and not I know you determined class. that you're not allowed to teach about God in, in the science. In non supernatural in, in non class. Okay, all right. So let me ask a question. How do you determine what's right and what's wrong, what's good and what's bad? On what basis? Like if these young people over here want to know what's right and what's wrong, how do you determine that? Two ways. Mm -hmm. First of all, based on what I feel as a member of the human tribe. So feeling, so sub they're subjective. Absolutely. So your what feelings, we call subjective, okay, but your we feelings, call a result of uh, altruism. So your, fe your feel. feelings could be different to somebody else's feelings. So the second thing is... Correct. Your feelings could be different absolutely. to somebody else. The so somebody can have a different morality to you. Different morality. I'm open-minded, but a little skeptical. A different view of a specific event. Okay, so if somebody said to you, I think types like you are dangerous, I want to get rid of you, would you say that's right or wrong? It depends. Okay, and here's the second thing. Do you remember I mentioned there were two things? Mm -hmm. The second thing is we establish laws by consensus. By consensus. So our different... tribe gets together okay. and decides what's right and wrong. Okay. We so... know that we decide, we just we agree on degrees of rightness and wrongness. Okay. A parking so... ticket not as serious as running somebody over with your car. So there could be a different consensus by a different group. 
Absolutely, and this process is what we call... You just said absolutely, but that's okay, an absolute. Very much. You said an absolute. Very much. We determine this by our legal system. And tribes all over the world have legal systems and legal traditions. Well, I can see we're not really getting anywhere, and I, I know what time is. I had some other meeting. I know you did too. And, I've got, uh, uh, I've got, I'm here for you, Ken, so, Mr. Hamm. Well, I wanted to see your facility. Well, do you want to walk down to the next deck? Yes, okay. sure. I'm great. Non-supernatural class. How did God create us? How did God create us? Well, you know what? As an infinite being, we don't know how he created. The Bible says he spoke and it happened. Because he. So knew these are room power. for future exhibits here? Yes. Infinite power, infinite knowledge, infinite wisdom. And he's able to speak everything into existence. How did he, how did he raise Jesus from the dead? How did, how did Jesus raise Lazarus? Because he is all powerful, because he's the infinite creator God. So, yeah, it's good to be here. So, young woman, I would say to you that there's a process that humans have developed over millennia by which we know nature. And we call that science. And I hope the big thing in science is questioning things. So, are you, are you telling, this little, are you telling this little girl that she is just an animal? The word just, I disagree with. She's a wonderful, beautiful animal. Say again? I believe with Mr. Hayes. Okay, so as you grow older, I encourage you to look at the world around you and make your own judgments. Yeah, but I, believe I may be wrong, but you can decide for yourself. You know, the scripture says, from the mouth of babes and sucklings, she knows there's a God. You know too. Uh, so I disagree with you, Mr. Hayes. So as you get older, just look at the world. I really encourage you to go to college sometime. Just make hey, that a, a goal. I went to college too. Did you know that? We have lots of scientists that went to college and they believe in God, just like we do. They have far fewer than we do on my side, by a factor of So we've already talked, about, we've already talked about kinds and species. But as I say, uh, and also young woman, the thing to really be concerned about is human-caused climate change. And one of the things Mr. Hamm has in his worldview is that human-caused climate change is not important. Oh, so no. these, we didn't say it's not important. Understand this. We this never is, said human climate these, change. These animals if, are... If humans can do things to pollute the world, humans should be doing their best to look after the world, but use it for God's uh, so glory what, what and species, man's good. What species do we yeah, have? I right? forget the name of these, actually. We, so we, the got male has they, tusks we, We've got here. labels to go on here that we haven't got on here yet. Some yeah, of the these place, are, I saw the place isn't quite finished. Right, it isn't. The right. hull isn't quite done. So, yeah, good. It's, uh, it's a massive undertaking, and we got it to the stage where we could have occupancy and and uh, so, so what is the function of Crosswater Canyon? The function of Crosswater Canyon? It's a board of directors who look after uh, the Ark Encounter for Answers and Genesis. But they're the not for profit, right? Yeah, they're not for profit, yeah. But Answers and Genesis and this building are for profit. Well, well we, 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 this is actually from an IRS perspective it's a flow through from uh, Answers in Genesis through Crosswater Canyon. So it's viewed as a not-for-profit, but we set it up as a for-profit so that we pay property taxes so that we help the community. Uh, and this is uh, also, yes, you had a question? Did you just have How many species of animals do you think were on the earth? See, I, I'm very skeptical that you could get any boat big enough to carry enough species to populate the world. I don't think it's true. This is what he and I disagree about. I think it's, it's humans made it up and it's not consistent with what we know, what you'll be exposed to in science class where there's no, in science class there's no supernatural explanations. Absolutely. All the explanations That's why we built this. for the world around us in science class are provided Based on by the what we observe. Well, help people understand how real we, uh, and how big it is. run experiments to as you get older, and I really encourage you to go to college or university sometime. So is Noah's Ark much more bigger than you think it is? Think what it was? No, I saw it on the uh, electric internet. Okay. So it's massive, isn't it? It's massive. It's concrete and uh, steel brackets. It has a lot of rivets. I saw a lot of Phillips head screws. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're going down this way. Uh, varnished uh, lumber that was polished with, I believe, uh, electric tools. Don't you think it's an engineering marvel, architectural marvel? 
even if nothing else. It's, it's okay. And built by creationists. Designed by a creationist. Yeah. That, to me, that's not a good thing, Mr. Ham. It's a squandering of our intellect and treasure. These people could have been doing something great. Instead of, uh, no, they, they are doing something intellect. great. They're doing something with purpose and meaning. To... They're doing this to be able to tell the world the truth about God's word and the gospel. Isn't so that I, wonderful? Not to me, no. So you would, you would rather just tell them that when they when they're dead, they're done. I mean, that was I'd your rather, phrase. I'd rather you told them uh, the discoveries that have been made by scientists over the last few thousand years. So, so I, here's what I don't understand. I still don't get it is why, why you get so upset with us telling people about, about God creating us and, and about who we are, that we're sinners and, and we're separated from God. I, I didn't say you were a sinner. I did. Oh, okay, well, that's, that's your oh, yeah, view. I'm, I'm saying, yeah, you're upset with us telling people about that and, and because of that, that's why we die, but we're made in the image of God. So I, I don't soul, have that cause and effect in my worldview, sir. Okay, I understand that. Um, but you're upset with us telling people about that, yet one day, when they're all dead, they're done. I still don't get it why, why you get so upset about Here's it. Here's what I think might, it might be. You're afraid of the future. I am? You're afraid, yeah. That's what I'm not afraid. Be. You're afraid of... Uh, I'm not afraid at all. What may happen. Oh, so I know it's going to happen. I'm going to go, I'm go to be with my creator forever. I'm not so, afraid. Uh, I'm open-minded, but uh, do, you, do you see that people on the outside have, from a non-supernatural standpoint, shown that your worldview could not possibly have happened. This is what we find so troubling. Well, yeah, as soon as you, but I keep as as asking you, you, how do you know? Well, you, I, we disagree. You, you create these two things you call historical science and observational science. In the mainstream, there's there's no such thing. No, it's all science. Because you because from your worldview perspective, you don't want to admit you have any beliefs. So you don't want to admit that well, you... our beliefs are based on evidence that's the difference well, no they're scripture. not your beliefs determine how you interpret the evidence i disagree with you completely so understand that as soon as you go back it sounds like you have a to me it sounds like a deeply inconsistent view okay well in what's the following in, way what's inconsistent i mean i you're, so you, you're you, okay. you tell me why i'm inconsistent okay and then i'll tell you why i think you're inconsistent you're fine with uh forensic evidence used by detectives or laboratory oh, technicians, but you're not, you're not good with forensic evidence provided by geologists or radiochemists or uh, geneticists. That evidence is not good enough for you. Uh, but somehow the other stuff is that contemporary that you were alive for has more meaning. Uh, you accept it. In science, in non-supernatural class, they're of a piece radiometric dating, genetics, the process of genetic change, that's all one piece as well as the crime scene. But for you, they're somehow separate. And that is inconsistent with the modern definition of science, of non-supernatural class. Okay, so if you let me speak now, uh, with forensic science, you can come in and test for blood in the present, and you can come in and find a murder weapon and you can even find fingerprints and then you can actually go and test somebody else's and you can test the blood for DNA and you can test their blood uh, for DNA. So if the Pteranodons were okay. vegetarians, why'd they have to be in cages? Bill, I said I'd let you speak. No, I just, well, you took us to an exhibit. Yeah, I said I'd let you speak and then you let me speak. Okay, so with forensic science, you can test the blood. You could even test it for DNA. You can test the fingerprints, then you can go and find a person and test their blood and test the DNA against it. And you can also test their fingerprints and compare them. And forensic science can actually, using those processes in the present, determine that, hey, this is, this is a guilty person because this is his DNA and these are his fingerprints. But that's very different. It's very different to saying, well, um, billions of years ago, when we weren't here, or millions, hundreds of millions of years ago, when we were here, somehow life formed in some primeval soup. You can't test that like that. So, so it's very different. So forensic, 
Forensic science has limits too because they can actually misinterpret and sometimes put the wrong person in jail. Even that has limits. But when you're going back to when you, can't, you don't even have it in front of you, you can't test it. That's what I'm trying to say, and that's what I was saying in the debate. That's very, very different than using your five senses in the present. It's not different at all. You're using your five senses to determine what happens with potassium and argon, using your five senses to determine sedimentation rates in rocks, using your senses to determine the rate at which snow compacts into glacial ice. Well, let me try it one using other way. Five senses. One other way. You and I go to the Grand Canyon. Just imagine we did. I've been there. We could have a great time. Hey, can you be friends with me? I don't think so, Mr. Hinn, not in the conventional sense. I can be I friends with you. I respect you as another member of okay. our tribe. Okay, as another member of our tribe. But okay. I, I can love you as a human being. Okay. Well, if you were in desperate, if you were in uh, some danger of drowning, yeah. I'm sure I would save you as a member okay. of the tribe. That, I, as a member of the tribe, not as you're not but you couldn't, you couldn't be friends. You couldn't be friends view. with me. You can be friends with me. I think I know what you're driving. At. No, we could be friends and we could write to each other, email each we other. We can be respectful of each other. Okay, we'll be respectful of each other. So let me ask you this. Okay, so so let me let me first of all. So we're not we're not friends, but we go as acquaintances to the Grand Canyon, mm -hmm. and we go down and we see the Coconino sandstone. Mm -hmm. You agree that we could measure how thick it is. Yes. You agree we could measure the diameter of the grains. Yes. And get the average diameter. Sure. You agree that we could look at it and say. When it's got grains like this, we can actually test them chemically and say, this is a sandstone. I guess so, yes. But now can we agree when it was put there? That's wow. what we don't agree. That's exactly the point. You didn't see it being laid down. No, neither did you. Neither did I. You're quite right. But then what we can do is look at some of those layers and we can see cross bedding and the more we, uh, and, and, and we see uh, the way in which uh, uh, the layers are formed and we see it's more consistent with being laid down by water. Uh, sandstone was probably laid down by water, yes. Mm -hmm. So, but we didn't see how long. Yes, we do see how long. That's where we disagree. So, do, when I look at the sandstone, do I see a label that says, this is how long we took to be Almost. Laid? We do? This one's older than that one. The ones above it are younger than the ones below it. We work backwards from top to bottom. But ha how but do you ha think this works? How do you think we all figure but this stuff How do you out? know how long it took for it to lay down? Couldn't it, could it have been laid down quickly? This right? is the fundamentals in geology. We study the sedimentation rate of the Colorado River. We work our way backwards. But if there was a lot more water in the past, you could have had layers more quickly, right? I follow what you're saying, but there's no evidence but, but for that, that. But that could have happened. No. It couldn't. It did but not happen. There was not a we, worldwide flood 4,500 years ago. But we've, actually, we've actually seen floods in the present. I've seen them in Australia where they lay down layers extremely quickly. They don't turn to sandstone and they're not under the other rocks above them. No, but you, we didn't see that form, did we? No, but we inferred that it happened. Inferred. We figured out. You prefer figured out I without believe, supernatural causes. Well, Let I me believe, ask you about these cages. So if these pteranodons were not... Uh, predatory. Why did they need to be in a cage? Why didn't Noah just let these guys wander around? What evidence do you have that there were cages? Well, the Bible told Noah to make, the word really means nests, to so make places for them to be able to exist, to live. And you just took it another step and made some nice wooden cages. Yeah, we did. With, yeah. with Amish crafts. Yeah. They did a great job, didn't they? Can you come around here? This is what last you mean thing. by great. I hope you're not denigrating the Amish craftsmen, by the way. They're, they're, like, they're fine craftsmen. They are, and they're wonderful but, people. But, and they believe in God. Uh, be that as it may, the earth is not 6,000 years old. <laughs> okay, okay. So, this is, this is deck one. Because somebody's not a bad person. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Selfie for their birthday? Cool. Thank you. Cool. Here's what we do. So, look at the lens. That's the trick. Don't look at yourself. Also, you'll see the number of cracks. You can tell the age of the owner by the number of cracks. And in math, we'd say it's inverse. The more cracks, the younger the person. Grown-ups don't have cracks because we know how much phones cost. Yeah, are you in this? Yeah. So look at the lens, that little dot. Don't look at yourself. Blah! <laughs> so now I want you to do it. See how I'm holding it? With these two fingers, you try it. 
So try it, yeah, but like that. With your index, then you can touch with your thumb. Get, get it out. Get, 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 get. There you go. Yeah, see, and people squeeze it. Here, you do one. People squeeze it, and then they shake the phone. It gets out of focus. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Here, look, 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 right there. Hey. Cool. Good job, you guys. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice to see you again. Yeah. It's good to see you. They let you in. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on in. Here, yeah, this will be the light's good. So, hey, camera woman, go on that side. That's not her real name. Hey. Is she doing grown ups with phones, man? We could be here all night. Yeah. You think she, yeah, okay, cool. You just touch it, mom. Can I get a quick selfie? Yeah, yeah, reach out. So here, I was just showing her. Yes. So watch, go ahead and take a picture. So now try it, holding it like that. See what I mean? Try that with those two fingers. Like now touch the dot with your thumb and look over here. Because what happens when you squeeze it, you shake the phone, it gets out of focus. Yeah, yeah, so the light's good this way, so here we go. Reach out, get her in the middle, look at the lens over here, the little dot. Hey. Hey, one more, one more question for you. Yes. I want everyone to come in here. Everyone can follow us. No, come on, you guys. They had a lot of space. So we have uh, Noah. Noah's praying with his family before the flood. Would you let me pray before we part? Uh, go ahead, yeah. That's okay? Yeah. I mean, if it, does that makes you feel better. Would you let me pray for you? I, I can't stop you, Mr. Ham. Okay. okay. I'm, Ma, so, you're doing that, I'm gonna be wishing like crazy that you all go to universities and learn about the worldview that, associated okay. with science. I just, want to, I just want to say a short prayer. A gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we come before you as a creator of the universe, and we're going to thank you and praise you for who you are, what you've done in creating us. We know that we, in Adam, sinned against you, and that we're fallen creatures, and we know that death is a consequence, but you stepped into history in the person of your Son to save us so that we can spend eternity with you. I pray for Bill, pray you'd open his heart to the truth of your word, and that he would not suffer that second death. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here's hoping you all learn about the process of science, the best idea humans have ever had. And I hope you learn about the cosmos and our place within it. And celebrate, if nothing else, the Juno spacecraft, which uh, for just barely a billion dollars, we put in orbit around Jupiter, just uh, on celebrating July 4th. And the people who planned that mission launched it on August 5th, 2011, knowing precisely that they could put this thing in orbit on the 4th of July. It's fantastic. It brings out the best in us. Science brings out the best in us. Aren't you all pleased you came to the Ark on the second day of opening and we had a walkthrough with Bill Nye. Bill Nye, the science guy. Hey, thank you, Bill. Thanks for coming and taking up my offer. So, you know, Mr. Ham and I disagree. To whom is she pointing? Sorry. Nice to meet you. Cool. Yes. There you go. We watched your movie just right on. Yeah. Which one? Seriously, we watched guys. your movie. Here, we came here. Movie. Cool. Yeah, Which one right. were you watching? Um, we one, watched the weather one. Two, and three. With storms. Yeah, I did. Okay. Earthquakes. With the guy sitting. And earthquakes is a good one. With the camera guy Arlo, they're eating an apple, shaking the camera. It's funny. It's funny. I saw that one. It's cool. Blow it up. Blow it up. Okay. I brought my youth group back. Thank you. Carry on, you guys.